luck is coming my way Wherever I go, hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way For today's grim adventure, we're going to be talking about the death, well, I should say murder, of Playboy Playmate Dorothy Stratton at the age of 20 in the year 1980. It's inside this house where Dorothy Stratton, her husband, a man by the name of Paul Snyder, and a couple of other roommates were living when she was murdered. It was a murder-suicide. From everything I can read online, Dorothy and her husband Paul lived in a room on the bottom floor near the garage. Now the garage is right here, obviously you can tell because of the, the car. But there's a window here, and there's also a window over here in the back. Not sure which one it is, but it's definitely this house. The story of Dorothy Stratton begins in Canada when she met a man by the name of Paul Snyder, who turned out to be a very controlling skeevy kind of human being who had ulterior motives. For example, or well, the main example, she was young, she was beautiful, she was very naive, but he saw her as a meal ticket to fame. She agreed to take nude photos, professional nude photos, and they sent them down to Hugh Hefner here in Los Angeles, Playboy, and he liked what he saw. Immediately, he flew her here out to California and for the most part, her career started really taking off almost immediately. I think it was 1979, she was Playmate of the Month. I think it was July. And then in 1980, she was Playmate of the Year. Being the kind of person Paul Snyder was, he had to have control over Dorothy. And he couldn't bear that she was living down here in Los Angeles whenever he was back in Vancouver. So he moved down here. And not too long after they got here, against everybody's, I wouldn't say wishes, but against everybody's recommendations of her not to marry him, she married Paul Snyder, and they moved into this house. I should point out that it wasn't just them living here at 10881 West Clarkson Road in the Rancho Park neighborhood. There was somebody else who lived up here, right where that balcony is. Somebody had a room up there. And there are two other girls living here. I can't find much information on them. As Dorothy Stratton's fame grew, so did her husband's jealousy. And over time, it became too much. And Dorothy ended up working on a movie. I can't remember the name of the movie. But she ended up falling in love and having an affair with the director of that movie. She moved into his house in Bel Air and started the proceedings to basically file for a divorce. As you can imagine, her husband didn't like that idea, and things got a little worse. Dorothy agreed to meet with her husband one last time to discuss the divorce proceedings and what was going to happen financially after the fact. Her attorneys advised her against it, but she said, this is something I need to do, and if I did it in person, it would go a lot easier. And on August 14th, 1980, Dorothy Stratton would have drove her car right up this street here and parked in front of this house, the house that she shared with her husband. And we know this because there's a photo of her car parked out front with a news crew looking in, covering the story. But inside this home, after she arrived, they say it was probably about an hour after she got here that Paul Snyder shot her in the face. And then about an hour later, he ended up committing suicide with a single gunshot wound, self-inflicted. Now remember, they had three other roommates. Not too long after Paul Snyder committed suicide, the two girl roommates, I don't know where they were staying in here, they came home and they saw Dorothy's car parked out front and the door to their bedroom shut. They figured they reconciled and they're probably inside doing whatever couples do, so they let them be. Hours go by. I'm talking hours, eight hours or something like that. The other roommate comes home and sees the same thing and they're wondering what's going on. They open up the door and they find both of them laying there naked, dead. Crazy. One thing I like to do is to try to find 
crime scene photos or news clips or some sort of video to line up to show what the place looked like back then. This particular crime was unable to find anything except for one photo. And that was a photo taken from pretty much where I'm standing the following day after the bodies were found. Dorothy's car would have been parked right in about the center of your screen. And it is in this photo. And the news crews are looking into the car covering the story. For the most part, this place looks identical to when it did in August of 1980. The only real big difference I can see is the shingles on the roof have changed. After the deaths, Paul, his body was taken back up to Canada where he's buried. Dorothy Stratton, however, her final resting place is here in Los Angeles in Westwood Memorial Park. It's a beautiful little cemetery. So, let's go visit it. Do you see that white building on the lower left hand side of your screen? That's where the final resting place of Hugh Hefner and Marilyn Monroe is. And right here in the same cemetery, it's the final resting place of Dorothy Stratton. Because of the time of the day, the sun is in a weird position, so half of her stone is covered in shade. But this is it, Dorothy Stratton, February 28th, 1960 to August 14th, 1980. And you can't see it, so I'm gonna go ahead and show a picture. There's a whole epitaph on here, which is actually really nice. Dorothy's stone is right behind that flower pot right there. And again, back in that white building is the final resting place of Marilyn and Hugh Hefner. It's neat. This little cemetery here is just hidden in between a whole bunch of skyscrapers. Now hopefully this gives you some sort of idea of what I meant by skyscrapers. On the other side of those cemetery walls are these buildings. And if I pan down just a little bit, Dorothy's grave is right there. After Dorothy died, there were a couple different movies that were made about her life, including documentaries. One of those movies, oddly enough, was filmed inside the actual house that she was murdered in. And stranger still, after she died, well, while she was alive, the man that Dorothy was having the affair with, after she died, that man married her sister, a woman by the name of Louise Stratton. It looks like there's a line of people here to pay their respects to Marilyn Monroe. And from where I'm standing, I can see that there are fresh lipstick kisses on her stone. While I'm here, I might as well stop and say hi as well. A few weeks ago, we did a video on Marilyn Monroe. And when we were here, there were no kisses on here. So this is kind of nice to see, as well as fresh roses. And after all, she was the very first playmate, whether she intended to be or not. But that's her final resting place. Right next to the man himself, Hugh Hefner. Wherever I come, I'm in love. Just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 